You can run the best campaign. You can have the best plans. You can get the nomination. You can win the popular vote. And you can lose the Electoral College and therefore the election. Welcome back to Andrew Says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once, and unless I was Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is one of those people who never actually went out with you, but claims that she did. And no matter how many times you try to convince her to stop telling people, she's still going to go around and tell people that you dated and it was serious and you just wish things would have worked out. Now, Hillary didn't lose the election, you guys. That much is pretty obvious. It was rigged against her. Even though she did say that if Trump lost, he wouldn't accept the outcome of the election, which is could have possibly been true, but that's not what happened, and that's what Hillary has done for these last three years. She has not accepted the results of the, of the election. Now, at George Washington University, recently she said voter suppression, hacking, fake news, and a lack of, lack of election security are the reasons why she lost. Fascinating. Fascinating, new, riveting results and information that we're learning here. Hillary says, this is one of those moments we stand at a crossroads of our own, a crisis in democracy. Racist and white supremacist views are lifted up in the media and in the White House. Hard fought for civil rights are stripped back. Rule of law is being undermined. Our norms and institutions are under assault. And that includes the single most important fight of our times, the fight to protect the right to vote. So a whole bunch of completely ridiculous claims she's making with no evidence. We are witnessing a deliberate and ongoing effort to undermine the integrity of our elections and silence millions of Americans, particularly the women and the elderly and the people of color and the people from the West Coast and the East Coast. My God, Hillary. My God. So let's watch a clip now where she basically says that she should have won. I've talked with many of the Democratic candidates for president, as you might guess. I've answered their questions about everything from digital outreach to investments in the early states. And I've ended every conversation uh, by saying to each one, let me tell you what I think the biggest obstacle might very well turn out to be, and that is this. You can run the best campaign. You can have the best plans. You can get the nomination. You can win the popular vote, and you can lose the Electoral College and therefore the election for these four reasons. Number one, voter suppression. So the first thing I'm going to point out after that is Hillary looks like Senator Paul Patin from, or Emperor, whichever time period you wish to refer to in the Star Wars universe, but she looks like that. Now, she brags about winning the popular vote, but complains about voter suppression and fake news. So, is she saying that she would have gotten even more votes if it wasn't for those meddling kids, Scooby and the gang? <laughs> Scooby Trump Jr.? I don't know. Now, we know the fake media stories were both very small in scope. It was like, I don't even want to get into it again, $13,000? I don't remember. I won't misstate it, but we, we've gone over it so many times. We know that they also supported her... Bernie and Trump, Facebook events, Facebook pages that were really just meant to, you know, get people riled up against each other. That was a form of election meddling. Was it actually effective as opposed, um, other than a bunch of old people going to fake rallies and stuff? No, not in my opinion. No. Now, we know a lot of illegal aliens voted, both in California and there's something like 12,000 votes in Pennsylvania, I believe. We know people were bussed around in different states to vote for d different DNC uh, and vote, vote in different DNC elections via Project Veritas, Scott Fovel, these guys that were exposed, busing people in the key swing states, mind you. So maybe maybe Hillary wouldn't, have, wouldn't even have been that close um, if you weren't getting people bussed around in your favor. But then still somehow Hillary is the one who's the victim here. She's still, you know, she's still fighting the good fight. She's still out there throwing jabs, throwing hooks. And it's not her fault, you guys. Then about voter ID laws, she says this. Voter ID requirements amount to the modern-day poll tax. Voter ID requirements made up for the purposes of prevention of certain people to cast a vote that would be counted. Now, of course, she's saying black people here. She's saying black people are suppressed by, vote, uh, by voter suppression, voter ID suppression. 
needing an ID to vote is voter suppression. Now, that being a problem, calling it suppression is laughable as it is confusing. And anyone not in the United States, uh, me particularly, I'm up here in Latvia, we don't get it, okay? It's proven. It's been proven countless times to be a fallacy. When CNN tried to go and prove that it was a very harmful situation, when I believe it was natives, Native Americans who weren't able to vote without ID, they then found that they were not being charged to get a, an ID, just a photo ID, and the reason why they couldn't vote was because they were trying to vote without having an actual um, street number on their house. So they were just trying to say, I live on this street let me vote. And they weren't allowed to do that, so they had to go and be inconvenienced by having a photo ID in order to vote and having an actual home address. What a, what a time to be alive. A home address? Excuse me, you can't ask me that. That's ridiculous. Now we also know that white college students in California say that black and brown people are too stupid to get their IDs and they don't know how to use the internet. Not really realizing how racist and silly they sound, that was proven through an Ami Horowitz video. Link in the description for that. If you haven't seen that, a lot of people have. It's pretty ridiculous. First of all, the idea that somebody doesn't have an ID is ridiculous, firstly. How do you go through life, especially the ages of 18 to 25, where you're going to bars, you're getting ID'd, you're trying to buy liquor, you're going to, uh, going to get ID'd? All these things where you need to get ID'd ordering a Russian mail order bride, things that normal people in their youth go through. You need ID for. And then the fact that people are saying that it's racist to ask for ID, or that it's voter suppression, is soft bigotry of low expectations. You're assuming that minorities do not have IDs like we suggested, but to say it's voter purging and voter suppression and all these things Hillary is claiming is insulting to our intelligence. Voter purging is another form of voter suppression. Between 2012, when President Obama ran, and 2016, when I ran, 12 million, 12 million voters were purged from the rolls. They were purged in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Ohio, in Florida, in other places, often using a system devised and paid for by Robert Mercer. And when you have a Republican-controlled state government, as we did in those states back in 2016, it's practically impossible. In fact, I'll say it is impossible to fight back, let alone to stop that very deliberate form of suppression. So, Hill Dog, tell me something. Since I know you're watching, I'll ask you directly. So what you're saying here is, tell me if this is true, of the 12 million votes, you would have won an overwhelming majority of them, therefore making you win the election. So them preventing these 12 million people from voting by purging them off of the records stopped you from winning because you would have gotten enough votes in each riding, in each uh, jurisdiction, to therefore win the election. Is that what you're saying? Now please show me one example of institutionalized voter suppression, and I'll actually read it. Because what I've seen so far is not anything close to that. Voter ID, having to have an actual address, being too far from a polling station, polling stations closing down. Now closing down voting stations is not voter suppression if you ask me when you can mail in your vote. That's like saying I can't go to the post office to send out my package, but I'm able to send out my package directly from my home, leave it on the front porch, somebody comes and picks it up. You are suppressing my ability to send mail. No, it's just one over the other. One may be less effort for you, one may be more convenient for you, but it's not preventing you from voting. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, Clinton isn't out here trying to say how vo bad voter suppression is. We all see, who, see through her charade. It's a sad song and dance she's been doing for a couple years now. She's saying that she should still be president if it wasn't for those a-holes, whichever kind of hole you want to call it, Hillary would be president. Keeping in mind Hillary had the primaries rigged for her, she had the polls rigged in her favor. She had the FBI covering for her in the email scandal. She had the FBI spying on Trump's campaign for her. She had the attorney general covering for her. She had the news media colluding and lying for her. Her emails were exposed, showing her true motivations and her campaign's true feelings about people and how corrupt they were. But still, Hillary should have been present. She somehow still deserves to be president. Now what's happened to Hillary fans? 
All of her delusional fans have either given up or they've jumped on some other crazy train, maybe Beto or Biden. And that's why I feel like the two-party system may come to an end in the United States after this next election. Because if you're not a communist or at the same time, you don't like Trump. Where are you going to go? Who are you going to vote for? Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang are the closest things you have to sanity and possibly even Biden now, sadly, in the Democratic ticket. But they're not going to win. And a vote for Biden is essentially bringing back the Clintons and the Obamas instead. So if you're not familiar with or you're not in favor of that corruption, you're probably not going to vote for Biden. So what are you going to do after this election? The Democrats aren't going far left enough for you. You don't like Trump. What are you going to do? That's why I think you'll have the DNC, which will be the Bidens and such, and that old and Kamal Harris and the old cabal. And then you'll have the Democratic Socialists. I think Warren will get on board with Bernie and the squad. And then you'll have the Republicans. Heck, you might even have the Republicans when Trump isn't running, and you'll have a split between the Trumps and the Rhinos, and maybe Don Jr. or something will run, and then the Republicans will put up Ben Shapiro or something like that. The victimhood never seems to end, and I'm wondering how it's all going to turn out after this election blows up in everybody's face.